top tier Jasmine Allure, and you are watching O Face Wrestling. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today on O Face Wrestling. This is your host, JT, and today I am joined by Jasmine Allure. So thanks for joining us today, Jasmine. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. I'm really excited to have you on the show. I see that you've been, you know, a professional wrestler for like a little over a year. If I'm not mistaken, I think you debuted in like what, February 2020? Yeah, January of 2020. Okay, yeah. So you've been doing this for like a little over a year and you've already made like a mm -hmm. huge impact. You've been wrestling all over the place on Mission Pro Wrestling, even AEW. So that being said, um, how did you get the opportunity uh, to wrestle for AEW? And like, tell me a little bit about your experience because you've had some big matches with them, including, you know, a singles match with Thunder Rosa. Like, that's a big deal. So tell me a little bit about all that. Um, so my trainers are like Jazz and Thunder Rosa. So they kind of got my foot in the door. Um, I did pretty well and maintained it in there. But yeah, so Thunder Rosa, she really helped a lot with us getting in there. So I would have to thank her for that. But yeah, she's been a big help in like my career so far. Oh, yeah, I know that Thunder Rosa is really big on you just helping the whiz, uh, the women's division, you know, women's wrestling mm -hmm. as a whole. Like, it's not just about her. She's always trying to help and, you know, build everyone else up. And also, I see that you've done some stuff at the Dog Pound um, Dojo. At, were you, like, as a trainee or kind of, like, helping out with the trainees? Um, no, so I graduated originally from my school here in Austin, AAPW, so I graduated from there, and I knew I needed, like, more advanced knowledge, like, you know, and so Thunder Rosa and Jazz, they, um, I first started with Jazz in San Antonio at the Rolling Oaks Mall, they had, like, a little ring there and whatnot, so I started off with Jazz, and then Jazz and Thunder Rosa kind of got together, and they did the Dogtown Dojo. And so I go there now. I reside in Austin, but I like drive back and forth just to train. But yeah, they just help me like really like be more specific, you know, like psychology wise. Cause my other school was just basics, you know, it was basics. They're really the ones that are helping me like get more advanced and get more out there. So I am there, you know, training still. Okay, that's really good. And um, I have to know, cause I know like, Thunder Rosa and Jazz, they have two completely different styles. You know, Jazz is more of the powerhouse. Thunder Rosa is more of the quick, you know, a little bit more of the high-flying kind of, you know, stuff like that. So tell me how – tell me the similarities and then the difference between, like, training with both of them. Because, you know, it, it – you know, just training with two different people with two different styles, I have to imagine that, you know, is definitely beneficial. But at the same time, you know, you're learning this, then you're learning the complete opposite thing. Like, so tell me a little bit about that. So, um, well, there's like different stuff we do. Like every day is really different. We learn a new thing. Um, Cause also Rodney Mack, Jazz's husband is training us there. And then we have Joe from NWA. He's like helping us with promo class. So yesterday we did like the whole day promo class. And then sometimes we'll do like practice matches and we'll get feedback from Jazz and Thunder Rosa. And they're, it's like pretty similar because wrestling is like the same thing. It's a fundamentals you just add your own spice or you know uh mix it up with like whatever your gimmick is and whatnot so getting critiques from both of them it helps a lot it's like even though they're different it's they still agree on certain stuff so I think and it's pretty cool like from woman to woman to learn from another woman about this business because it's like it's different from a guy and a girl because you know the guy's locker room isn't the same as the girl's locker room so you know just all that kind of stuff. Exactly. And like, you know, I just think it's just so amazing that you've been, you know, been able to train with like two legends, like in the business so early. And I can mm -hmm. see how much that's really benefited you because, uh, you know, you clearly are very, very talented in such an early stage of your career. And at the same time, you've like gotten like opportunities that people would like kill for, like, you know, AEW, Mission Pro, like, you know, it, it's crazy. And even at, you know, Mission Pro, you were in a tag team match against the Twisted Sisters, like you know, one of the biggest tag teams on the indies, like that's really dope and, mm -hmm. and all that. So um, I see that you work the, you know, a decent amount as a heel. So like, do you prefer working mm -hmm. as a heel or as a face guy? I feel like it just, you it just flows so well with you um see the beginning of my career I was like a baby face like 
most of the time and I hated it I just was like no I want to be a Q like I don't like I feel like it's gonna be easier and then now that I'm like transitioning into heel it's like I kind of want to go back to the baby face <laughs> for some reason like I miss it but um I really like both but I think I think heel fits top to Jasmine a little more so I'm really excited for like the new stuff I'm about to do and like these promotions because they are booking me more as a heel so yeah, because that's, like, the one fun thing about the indies. Like, you could be a heel at one promotion and then a face at another one, like, the very next week. And I and I actually experienced that because I went to um, MCW um, last year in February, and Trisha Dora, she was a heel. Then, like, a month later, I'm at, you know, D.C. watching her wrestle, and she's a face. I'm thinking, like, this is really cool because in WWE, like – or, you know, any major televised pr- promotion, you know, if you're a heel, you don't turn face without there being like a storyline, you know, or something like that, or, you know, vice versa. But on the indies, it's like, there's no story. It just depends on the promotion that you're in and stuff like that. So I always think that's kind of neat. And I feel like it kind of, you know, keeps you all on your toes because you have to kind of like, you don't always plan on things. Like, you know, when you're about to make that major turn on, you know, televised wrestling, you know, like it's planned in advance, but here's like, okay, now you have to be in this, you know, kind of, you know, mood and you get to do this. So I think that's like really cool. And I'm really impressive how you all could just like flip the switch just like that, depending on, you know, whatever promotion you're wrestling for. Right. Right. Yeah. I can't imagine like being a heel for like a whole year. <laughs> That'd be kind of like, like, I'd be like, oh, I want to switch. No, I had a match, which was really interesting. It was like in Corpus Christi um, against Vert Vixen. And we were like, we're just going to go out there and whatever the crowd decides we are, that's what we're going to do. Like we didn't call any, like we called certain stuff, but we we're like, we're just going to let the crowd decide who's the face and who's the heel. And so that was a fun match. That was a really fun match. That sounds really fun. So who did the <laughs> crowd decide as the healer in face? I was the face. Okay. And then she was like the heel, yeah. Okay, I've never seen Vert Vixen as a heel yet. So I definitely got to look up that match if it's on YouTube or something. Because I've always seen her as the face. Well, there's like some, because we have like a feud in AAPW and there's like some videos that we have like four matches there and that was the face the whole time. And that was like the beginning of my career where I was like, I just want to be a heel. I just, and like, I even acted heelish and they're just like, the crowd's turning on you. You need to be more baby. And I'm just like, fine. But yeah, like she's mostly like, whenever I wrestle her, she's been the heel. So there's just some videos out there. Okay, yeah, I definitely got to look that up after this interview. So um, I wanted to ask, too, because you had mentioned that, you know, you go by, like, top tier, you know, Laura. Like, where did that come from? So, like, in less than a year, I was, like, obviously already facing these names at AEW. You know, Jazz, Thunder Rosa, like, Jordan Grace, Holly Dead. And I was only, like, a couple months in, so I was, like, okay, I'm facing these top talents. And then I'm like proving that I can hang with them. So that makes me top tier. And I wanted to transition into heel. So I remember my coach was like, well, you got to give me something that's heel. Like I see baby facing you because you're, you're firing and all that. I'm like, okay, well, I'm top tier. And like I have this attitude and whatnot, this ego. And so then they started transitioning me to heel. So it was like mostly me wanting to get out of the baby face just because I've been doing it for so long. And I was like, I want to, know what being a heel is like so that's how that came about okay that kind of gives me vibes of like the whole randy orton legend killer thing when he was Mm -hmm. the legend killer because he was beating up the legends so that kind of makes sense like you're you know top tier because you're going against the top you know wrestlers in the business i I like how it makes sense too it's not just some kind of gimmick that you gave yourself like it actually goes along with what you've been doing with your career yeah, no, I just wanted to be top tier. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, well, that's... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, like, I, I always like to ask this, too, when, when I talk to, like, a wrestler about heels and faces like that. So, how, like, when you, like, are a heel in the ring and then you go out to your merch table, do you still kind of be heelish or you just kind of, like, be yourself when you're in, interacting with fans and all? Oh, uh, I'm... I want to say, like, I wanted to be heelish, right? But then it's like, I can't. Like, when they're buying my merch, I'm just like, hey, what's up? Like, I'm just naturally, like, nice, <laughs> I guess. So um, I guess I'm not that heelish, which I probably should be, but I'm not really. 
yeah, I noticed like in general, like on my podcast, like I'll see like a wrestler on TV or whatever as a heel. And then, you know, when I, they come to my show, I don't know what to expect. Are they going to stay in character? Are they going to be themselves? So I think it's always like really fun seeing them as themselves and just like, Oh, like, wow, yeah. this person is really evil on TV, but now look at them, you know, we're just having this really great conversation. I always think it's fun, like interacting with the wrestlers, like, you know, at the end of the day, we know that, you know, you're just portraying a character in the ring and stuff like that. So it's like, it's really cool to see you all like being yourselves and stuff like that. Right, and right, like, yeah, and that's what I try to be most of the time. I mean, I can't help it. I just like go up and talk to my fans, and I'm just like, "Hi, hey, what's up?" I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, because yeah, I've talked to some wrestlers. Um, some you know, want some are so dedicated to their character they don't even do merch tables because they said like heels shouldn't sell their own merch. Have you ever heard of that yet? I've heard of that, but um, I think that was just more like old school. It was like a more old school mentality. I know everyone sells merch now. I mean, I would love to sell merch because I make a lot of money off of it. So even if I'm a like heel, I'm a summer merch. Um, but I know they separate us. Like they'll be like, okay, the faces will like sell their merch around the ring and then the heels over here. So they do like keep it like that. But for what I know, heels still sell money right now they're selling merch i think back in the day they wouldn't that's why like there was also the rumor going around um that heels would get paid more because they weren't selling merch so but i know now it's like doesn't matter yeah i never heard of that one i just i just know that the one wrestler who told me that she did say that she's old school so she mentioned that but it's just like me personally Mm. if i were a wrestler i would still want to sell the merch like i want like you said i want the money you know like because that that you know can be like a really big profit for the wrestlers you know depending on their popularity and their selection and stuff like that like you can make a lot Mm. more money off of your merch than you did getting the booking and stuff like that right yeah merch some people live off merch you know so I don't know that's that's cool but it's like I probably would want to sell my merch <laughs> exactly like I respect it at the end of the day but it also sucks because you know as a fan I want to meet the wrestlers the one wrestler she's like you know you didn't come say hi to me I was like well, I was looking for your merch table she's like well I didn't do it because you know I'm a heel and I was like oh well sorry I could <laughs> I didn't see you walking okay. around but yeah uh, so now my next question. Now, this is one of like the earlier questions that I typically ask. So what was your initial inspiration to wanting to become a professional wrestler? When I was younger, I was like that sister that wanted to do anything or everything that my brother did. And he grew up watching wrestling. So I remember like I was really young, like three or four, and I was just sitting next to him watching wrestling and whatnot. So it kind of like that's how I like got into it and then I fell in love watching more and like watching these women do these crazy things and you know like Trish, Lita, Jazz like that's what I watched growing up and I was like yeah if they can do it I can do it so that's how I got inspired and then summer 2019 I was going through a lot like mentally and whatnot like moving out you know to the U.S. to go to college and then college getting really hard it was just so hard on me and then so then I was like, okay, I need to do something that distracts me. And that was wrestling. Wrestling was my happiness. And it was like my escape. So when you first started like training, you know, to become a wrestler and all that, was it what you expected in, in the beginning? No, <laughs> no, it was a lot more painful. Like I heard stuff like, oh, wrestling snake, da, da, da. it doesn't even hurt. It hurts. Like, my body was hurting for, like, a, the first few months. Like, even now, but, like, the first few months were, like, intense. It was, like, my whole body was sore. Like, everything. Like, I did soccer, like, growing up. So, like, I know what, like, pain feels like in my legs. Like, soreness, because I would run a lot, right? But, like, this was, like, everything. My neck, like, my ankles, everything was hurting. So, it's definitely not what I expected. But it was, like, something, like, I got into that ring. I took bumps and whatnot. And I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. I don't care how much it hurts. This is what I want to do. Like when you meet that person, it's like, oh, this is the one. That's how it was with wrestling. Like this is what I want to do. Exactly. That kind of reminds me of me when I first like started interviewing wrestlers. Like I didn't really know what the future was going to be with it, but then 
you know, cause I'm, I'll be honest with you. Like I, I tend to get really shy and sometimes, you know, I'm not the best at conversation. So I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, you know? So I did it and I was like, you know what? I really like this. Like I, I could do this, you know? And as time, it just becomes a regular thing. Like, you know, want from like featuring two wrestlers a month to, you know, one every week. Sometimes I have two wrestlers on the show a week. Like it's like crazy. And like, so I definitely know like, you know, that love and when you're passionate about something and, all that and um as far as like the pain like when you watch like mainstream wrestling on tv you won't really know until you go to a live event when you actually hear like a wrestler gets slammed on the you know the mat like it is so loud because you can't hear that on tv because of the crowd and stuff like that but when you're there live it's so loud like um i was at an event in tennessee this weekend and we had front row seats and it was, it was so loud. Like I, I just wanted to cry. Like just hearing them get <laughs> like, I just, it, it was like really intense. And um, obviously because of like the pandemic, there was that period of time where it really wasn't any wrestling. So my friend that um, wrestles down here at MCW, like she, uh, you know, she wasn't wrestling for several months and then she went to train for the first time in so long. And I saw her like the next day she could barely walk. Like that's how <laughs> like, much pain. she's like, I think I took a little bit more, bumps than I should have taken but I was like yeah like that that just really shows how much like y'all put your bodies through you know just training like it's crazy yeah for sure and then like even if you take like a little break like COVID I took like a one month break from like any in-ring activity and coming back it was like wow you gotta start all over again like that whole soreness comes back and it's just it's insane but you know we do it for y'all to entertain y'all and we also do it for ourselves to like escape, but it's really for entertainment. So, yeah, we definitely appreciate it, that. <laughs> you know, because like, you know, you all are putting your bodies through the line for our entertainment. And, you know, it's, you know, like I said, just like going to the live events and just hearing how much you all really put your body through just, you know, creates an even bigger appreciation for what you all do. Yeah, for sure. And like, that's what I do like when I go out there I put it all out there like even though I'm gonna be hurting the next day I'm like it's worth it it's gonna look good it's gonna people are gonna love it it's, it's okay exactly so speaking of like pain and all that kind of stuff that you know wrestling puts in your body like what's one like I, I, I like kind of like a hardcore maybe like stipulation that you haven't done that you just really want to do like it could be a ladder match cage match or death match like you know is there anything on your radar that you really want to do um I know I watched like growing up I love the Hardy Boys so they had those crazy TLC matches or the ladder matches so I definitely want to do a ladder match you know where the like the belts are hanging and like I definitely want to do that in my lifetime. That's like one of my goals. Um, but yeah, for sure that. Would you actually like be willing to like do a crazy like leap off of top of ladder onto somebody, especially like outside the ring onto like tables, like the Hardy Boys, you know, did a lot? I feel like I would do it if I knew like the ambulance was like right there, just in case, you know, because I would go all out and then, you know, my crazy self who knows what I do I probably do a lot of crazy stuff or pitch in and then they'll be like mm, maybe not but you know I definitely pitch in a lot of crazy ideas would you ever do anything crazy like because I know we were talking about Thunder Rosa earlier I'm sure you saw her match on AW with like the thumbtacks and all that kind of crazy stuff would you ever do anything to that kind of level for sure for sure and especially if it's like main eventing uh like an AEW or you know WWE event like for sure I would definitely do it yeah because like me like I'm a big fan of hardcore matches and you know I just it doesn't happen that often in wrestling but I always get really excited when you see the wrestler like pull out the bag and you just know it's yeah. thumbtacks <laughs> and I can just imagine how much pain like it's just crazy like you know let and you know people actually like do that stuff like that but it's just it's it just feels so like real seeing all these thumbtacks and like the kind of the blood coming out like I always like I feel like the blood always makes the matches more dramatic and stuff like that like um Stone Cold Steve Austin when he was in that sharpshooter like it just always adds to the match and it, I've always just been a really big fan of the you know like the hardcore matches and stuff like that right me too especially if, like it's a ongoing storyline it just makes it even better so I definitely would want to do it but probably one of those were like one and done 
exactly yeah i I feel like it's like a bucket list thing like i want to do it but i don't want to do it constantly because you see how like it can really put a wear and tear on your body like mick foley's the perfect Mm -hmm. example like that destroyed his body yeah for sure so just be like one and done that's it you know make it like main event or something and that's it (laughs) exactly so now i got a fun question for you so what is your favorite all-time match that you've ever watched on tv it's so hard because there's so many good ones, but I think the most memorable one would be Shawn Michaels versus Undertaker, WrestleMania 25, just because my whole family sat down and we watched it together. And that match was just, I mean, they did really, really well, but I think just because like my family, we were all together, like I asked for my birthday, you know, hey, like I don't want anything. I want to party. I just want you to buy me WrestleMania 25, like the pay-per-view. And they're like, it's $75 for just a pay-per-view. And I was like, well, that's what I really want. Like I just like that was back then before the WWE Network. So I was like, well, that's what I really want. So they got it for me and whatnot. And it was like, I think, and then that match just really stood out for me. So I think that is like really memorable. Yeah, I remember um, seeing that match on the network. It was phenomenal, like definitely five star match. Um, it was unfortunately like it happened right before I got back into wrestling. I think I got back into wrestling around like WrestleMania twenty seven ish, you know, around that time period. So that was kind of when Undertaker was having the WrestleMania matches with Triple H, which were phenomenal as well. But yeah, I just I regret getting out of it. I was one of those kids where I got in high school and I, I felt like I was too cool for wrestling, you know, especially because yeah. like it happened yeah because i know that was like the john cena era and you know a lot of you know he's more of a i feel like you know the kids love him so it kind of didn't seem cool you know but yeah like getting back into wrestling for me i would probably have to say gargano and champa uh i forgot which takeover i think it was new orleans it was like the one where he like finished him off with the brace at the very end like i was out of breath after that match like I had to sit down and really catch my breath because I did not expect it to be as hard hitting as long like that was just amazing yeah. but you know um speaking of you know NXT and all that so now my next question um who would be your dream match you know in either NXT or you know the main roster Raw or Smackdown um Sasha Banks she's always been my dream match um just because I also took that break from wrestling because I remember the last, I think it was Raw event that I went to. It was like a bikini, like I lived in Orlando, so it was a bikini, like women's tag match, you know, eight man women's tag match. And I was like, well, this is like only last like five minutes. What are, like, I'm not going to watch wrestling anymore, right? Like that's what I was like thinking. And so I took a break and then I came back and I saw the first match I saw was Charlotte versus Becky versus Sasha at WrestleMania and so I was like oh these girls can wrestle so then I started watching like more of their matches you know at NXT and when I like the four horsewomen so they really inspired me to get back into it but Sasha just like her style is like a little similar to mine but I love it so much so I definitely would love to wrestle her yeah, and that's actually funny because typically when I ask that question, a lot of people used to always say Charlotte, but now a lot of people are starting to say Sasha again, and it makes me really excited because I'm a really big Sasha fan. And, you know, I always mention this about her, but she can have a five-star match with anyone. Like, she never has a bad match. Like, it don't matter who you – she could be in the ring with a mop, and it's still going to, you know, steal the show. Like, you know, so I feel like you can never go wrong with her, and she kind of, like – there, there's like when she's on tv like you're just drawn to her like there's i feel like there's really no flaw in her and like yeah you really see that because we're all human we all have flaws but it's just like i just can't think of anything about her like that you can really say that she needs to improve because she's literally got it you know it just it sucks that they didn't really properly give her a title reign up until recently but it, it's you know I, i'm glad that she got the main event wrestlemania i thought that was pretty dope yeah, she's amazing. Like you said, like five star match. And then you're like, well, people are saying, oh, she needs to improve. But every time I see her, she's getting better. You know, like she's just like better and better every single time I see her. So, yeah, 
I love exactly. her too. <laughs> the only thing I would say is sometimes I felt like she like went a little too hard sometimes. It's like sometimes like, hey, you're gonna kill yourself out there. Like this is just a, yeah. a regular SmackDown match. Like, you know, save it for the pay-per-view. But like, yeah, she goes out there and just kills it. Everything she does, like even her entrance, the way she moves is just like, it's flawless. Right, right, yeah. So now my final question that I have for you. So what is uh, one thing about yourself that doesn't relate to wrestling that you're like really proud of that you would want fans to know about? It could be something as big as you graduated from college or something like as small as like you're a really big Simpsons fan, you know, something like that. Well, I'm still in college. So while I'm doing wrestling, I'm also like college full time. So that's something I'm doing. But honestly, like I haven't really done anything like that like I'm a very boring person outside of wrestling <laughs> like, like outside of wrestling they'll be like what's your hobby like what do you like to do wrestle like train watch wrestling like that's what I do so when like in the wrestling business they're like what do you do like outside I'm like what do you mean like this is my life <laughs> so yeah um, I don't think there's anything like that but I mean right now I'm still like I graduated from high school um, I moved out at 17 so I guess I am really proud that I got to move out at 17. I was living in Mexico and there wasn't like opportunities there to go to college so I had to like you know move away from my parents and like take a big step and you know come here to the U.S. to be able to finish high school and get like a scholarship to college so I'm really like blessed and grateful that I'm able to do college and wrestling and also have like a side job so um, that's something I'm really proud to be able to juggle all these things at once exactly that's definitely something to be proud of you know I can only imagine how like stressful and how scary it could be to like move to a different country like it's like just the idea of moving to a different state kind of like scares me makes me nervous like just (laughs) going to a completely different um, country was there any kind of like did you have any issues with the language or did you already kind of like know English prior so like my whole story is um and it's kind of long but I'm gonna put it like make it shorter so I like was born and raised in Orlando Florida and that's where like I was raised and whatnot at the age of 12 I moved to Mexico with my parents and so I was there for a little while and then you know I was no opportunities no jobs so then I decided to come here Austin Texas and land of opportunities and I'm able to do all these things so I didn't have a like a lot of trouble because I was born and raised in Orlando I had trouble when I moved to Mexico with like the Spanish language and then these teachers who are really really strict and they really just sometimes don't care about like the students they're like I'm getting paid regardless and it's like okay well I don't understand what you're saying so I failed a lot but luckily like you know they were like okay we get it you don't know Spanish we'll pass you but like it was hard it was intense and then it was like in a it was like my first classroom getting there was middle school and it was a shed with only one light bulb no air conditioning and then the floor was just dirt and it was like 50 of us in a little room so it was like crazy and I was just like I could not focus but you know I got out of there I'm here now so yeah, that's that's definitely crazy, like trying to learn like a different language, because I took four years of Spanish in high school and I never learned anything. <laughs> like, I, I, the, everyone was just too far ahead of me that my teacher didn't care to like slow things down for me. And luckily, my last year I passed the class because I had one of those teachers where if you just did the work, you got an A. It didn't matter if you got okay. a so I would just fill in the blanks mm-hmm. with like random Spanish words and stuff like that. And eventually at the end of the semester, she really looked at my work. She's like did you just randomly put you know words and those like <laughs> <laughs> but yeah by Spanish that- is a really hard language it is. like I am like people are like oh English is so hard I'm like I think Spanish is way harder like y'all have all these words it's different when you talk to an adult than it is to like a friend like you have to diff- like words like the verbs are different too like that's so crazy to me exactly and like I at the warehouse that I work at there's a lot of Spanish people I would say probably 90 percent of them are Spanish so they're actually teaching me and I've learned more you know working with them in the last year and a half than I did like the four years in high school which I I think it's best learning with you know people that um are really willing to teach you because they they love teaching you like 
how to say different things. They'll, they'll point at something and they'll say it in English and they'll say it in Spanish and they'll make you say and stuff like that. And I know they're very proud about their food too. Like they love, you know, showing us and teaching us about, you know, their, their culture and stuff like that. So I think that's always fun learning about that as well. Yeah, for sure. Like the food is like probably the best part of Mexico. It's like the one thing I miss. And um, sadly, because of COVID, I can't go back and visit my family. But like once I go back there, it's gonna be like tacos every day. <laughs> yeah, we had a potluck like a year ago, and oh my god, it was banging! Just like the food there, I was like in heaven. Everyone was like had a smile <laughs> on their face. It was like the best thing ever because it was literally a hundred percent all Spanish food, other than the sodas. But it was just it was amazing. Like. The, the food is so delicious. I love Spanish food. Like I love going to Spanish restaurants and all that. Um, I, I just have a thing for spicy foods at the end of the day. <laughs> me too, me too. I need to stop because I have like a stomach ulcer. And not like, because my breakfast in middle school when I was in Mexico was like hot Cheetos with a lot of hot sauce. Mm -hmm. and that was my breakfast for like three years. Oh, wow. See, like me, like I like doing that intense, like, spicy challenge kind of thing like uh, have you ever heard of like one chip challenge i want to do it so bad but i'm so scared that like it's never gonna go away like the spiciness i don't know why i've seen people throw up from it and i'm also scared of that yeah i saw a guy on youtube he tried eating 10 of them i think he ate like three before it got to the point where he was done oh, and man. he was like in so much pain but when i did it I survived, obviously. It wasn't, like, <laughs> as bad as I thought, but it, like, you'll feel, like, yourself, like, heat up, like, slowly, like, your face gets really warm, and you'll sweat a little bit, but it was pretty intense. Um, Actually, like, one of the wrestlers that I've had on my show um, a few times, the last time she was on the show, we actually did the little Nitro Challenge, which is the world's hottest gummy bear. That little thing is hot. It is really hot, and it's so chewy. That so exists. Hard, you know? So... Yeah, like I, I, I wanted to do something fun for that episode. So, well, you know, she likes gummy bears. Let's do this. So I, I wanted to spice things up literally, but that was uh, that was really fun. I, I wish you like, did you have like milk? <laughs> yes, we both had milk. Okay. Um, anytime I eat anything spicy, like I'm always prepared. She had almond milk. I don't know how well that does versus regular milk. But <laughs> yeah, like always milk. I, I learned the hard way not to do water because just um it water doesn't do as good and you have to drink more then it makes your stomach feel sick because you got all that fluids in you then I usually get sick and sometimes I will vomit like just too much water intake but um yeah that actually happened when um years ago my wife got me ghost pepper wings from Buffalo Wild Wings and didn't tell me they were ghost pepper wings because she thought she would surprise me and she was mad at me about something so she decided not to tell me after she gave me the wings and I run in the room I'm like what the hell kind of wings are those I'm chugging these waters and I get so sick from that <laughs> I was like I'm doing milk from now on oh my god I'm gonna so do that the next time I'm like mad at my boyfriend I'm gonna just be like here's some wings I bought you some wings see what you should do is you should buy that chip and put it in a bag of Doritos and then you just wait for it. I've seen people do that prank a lot on YouTube and I think that's a pretty good one because it blends in so well with the regular Doritos. I hope he doesn't watch this podcast because I'm going to totally do it. Do it, definitely. Or you could do the, get the little nitro that's cheaper, I think, and put that in the bag of gummy bears. It, either he way. He loves gummy bears. So yeah, that's gonna, does it look the same? It has the gummy bears holding a little nitro stick but it you can't i didn't even notice it until my um friend mentioned it she's like oh this has a little nitro I'm like i didn't even notice that so you would have to like really look like at it to pay attention and who really does that when you're eating gummy bears you're just grabbing them and eating them so i think you'll be fine yeah i'm just so like i'm so clumsy so i'm gonna try so hard not to get any because he'll probably be like you want some i'm like yeah and i'm watching me get it and i'm gonna cry oh that would so, that would be I, so funny that would you know definitely backfire <laughs> you know real bad on you yeah so i definitely gotta keep my eye out but i'm definitely gonna try it so hopefully he doesn't watch this yeah if you do try you know you definitely gotta record it you know i am <laughs> you know proof for it didn't happen but um, yeah, so Jasmine, that was um, that wraps up the interview that uh, we discussed just about everything and more. Like I didn't expect anything <laughs> to come up. So I thought that was a fun, you know, topic to talk about. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. Like I hope our little conversation was 
really nice. Thank you. Hey, you're very welcome. So uh, Jasmine, did you want to share your social media with the listeners so they know where to find you on social media? So everywhere I'm at Jasmine Allure, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And then on every single one of those, I have a link where you can get my merch and whatnot. I post my merch like almost every day. So you won't be able to miss it. As long as you follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Jasmine Allure. All right. And make sure you all give her a follow. I will put the links to all of them in the bio. Also, make sure you give us a sub on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Thank you all for tuning in. And thank you so much again, Jasmine, for joining us today on O-Face Wrestling. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Bye, everyone.